All right. Well, good afternoon, everyone. So glad to be here with Secretary Buttigieg. So glad to have driven here with Secretary Buttigieg. And all was well. I can report that he is an excellent driver, very cautious, safe. And, um, and it was a very smooth and quiet ride because we were driving in an all-electric Ford Mach-E, which is one of the federal fleet and that federal fleet is being turned over because President Biden has said that he wants all vehicles in the fleet to be electric. And uh, yes, there, there are 656,000 or 57,000 vehicles in that, uh, in that vehicle fleet. And so I'm pleased that both the Secretary of Energy and the Secretary of Transportation uh, have one of the earlier versions of uh, electric vehicles coming in. Um, we're here today because our offices have signed an MOU, which is a Memorandum of Understanding, because we are going to work together to deploy electric vehicle charging across the country. That electric vehicle charging is being enabled by the Bipartisan Infrastructure Law, which has $7.5 billion in it to ensure that every pocket of the nation has access to charging. We want to ensure both that the chargers exist and that people can afford electric vehicles as well. And so part of President Biden's vision is to address two problems. One is the anxiety that people might feel if they buy an electric vehicle and don't necessarily have a place that's close by to be able to charge. And the second is the cost of those electric vehicles overall. And so the, after the bipartisan infrastructure law, the Build Back Better agenda, puts forth tax credits at the dealer to reduce the cost of an electric vehicle. That would be a $7,500 tax credit at the dealer off the top uh, when you purchase a vehicle. An additional tax credit if that vehicle is made in the United States. And, a, and we want to make sure that people have the ability to purchase vehicles that are used and electric. And so that bipartisan excuse me, that uh, Build Back Better agenda will also have a $4,000 tax credit for used electric vehicles. So reducing the cost of electric vehicles, making these chargers accessible, will all propel a revolution in this country toward electrification of the transportation sector, which is the sector that is predominant now in creating um, carbon pollution, and in therefore contributing to these extreme weather events that are caused by accelerated climate change. So I am so pleased that our offices are going to be working together. The Department of Energy helps to map where these stations are going to be needed. The Department of Transportation is going to make sure that the chargers and that the guidance given to states is all very consistent. And I am uh, pleased to have such a great partner in this effort. Please welcome Secretary Buttigieg. Well, uh, thank you, Secretary Granholm, first of all, for trusting me with your life and the <laughs> ride over here. Oh, very good. Uh, and uh, it is great to be here celebrating the future of American transportation in electric vehicles. Uh, as the Secretary said, it was a nice, smooth ride in this DOT vehicle, uh, something that I was actually motivated to uh, uh, accelerate acquiring after seeing Secretary Granholm do the same. Uh, with, uh, with her fleet. And uh, thanks to the President's executive order, the entire federal government is moving in this direction, uh, which has a couple of benefits, obviously climate benefit, but also taxpayer benefits in the long term because of the fuel savings. And we are delighted to be celebrating the formation of this joint office with the Department of Energy. Even more than was already true, you cannot separate transportation from energy when it comes to the electric vehicle future of this country. As you heard yesterday from Vice President Harris, as she announced many of these new steps that we're taking toward uh, the administration's vision, this is going to be a big step in making electric vehicles both more accessible and more affordable for all Americans. Now, our departments have had a great relationship for a long time. Uh, the research and the action that uh, the Department of Energy leads goes hand in hand with what we seek to do at DOT. But this allows us to take things to a new level bringing together our top experts and making sure we have the right guidance for the billions of dollars in funding, in taxpayer funding that Congress has uh, uh, laid at our feet to go out and quickly get results 
from in terms of that nationwide network, that goal of up to 500,000 electric vehicle chargers across the country. And we're standing right next to one of them. Uh, this is a station that is uh, now uh, an electric charging station and one of uh, what we think there will be many. A reminder also that this can be good business and a source of good jobs in communities across the country. Uh, so we're really excited about what this means in terms of accelerating that uh, all important transition for our climate. And we're going to continue to work to make sure that it is accessible and affordable to all. That's where chargers and tax credits come in. Remember, uh, it is often those who uh, are most economically vulnerable who could theoretically benefit the most from having electric vehicles, but only if they can afford them, which is why that affordability in those tax credits is going to make such a big difference. Whether you live in a dense city, whether you live in a rural county, the electric vehicle revolution is for you, and we are working to make sure that that is possible on, on the best terms uh, for every family and every driver. So with that, I think we got a little bit of time for questions, and uh, really looking forward to uh, um, sharing our answers. Uh, I think, uh, <laughs> Carrie from our team, are you quarterbacking? Okay, great. So I'm sure the Secretary has some thoughts. I, I'll tell you, the, the, the interim targets are exactly the kind of thing that this joint office will be racing to develop. Uh, now, we're not doing this from zero because we've already partnered on the alternative fuel, fuel corridors model. That helps to sketch out and map out where some of these chargers need to be. Some places it already happens. It's already profitable. Uh, other places where they're most needed, it won't happen without some kind of incentive. Uh, the President has talked about that goal of half a million chargers, and that's what we're working toward to help make sure that the network is as robust and as rich as it needs to be. And in terms of timing, I can tell you there's a real uh, uh, fire under us right now to move quickly uh, because we have a goal of getting guidance out by February uh, so that our state and local partners know what to expect as they seek funding so that that funding can flow later on in the year. So, uh, you know, among, I've, I've often said with this infrastructure law, some of what we're doing is building cathedrals, right, a new airport terminal you may not see for years. Uh, but in terms of these chargers, you're going to see them sprouting up very quickly around the country. Anything you would add? Yeah, I, I would just add that, um, you know, the law requires this guidance to be out by February 15th to states. Then states can respond with their plan by early summer. And so once their plan is approved, that funding will flow. Some states, um, like Michigan, for example, leverages uh, private sector or utility dollars to be able to make that dollar go further. I mean, here in, in Maryland, for example, uh, Maryland will get $63 million for um, EV charging. Some of the funding will go by formula like that. Some will go uh, via grant and, and some of that will depend. And again, this office will work on what the conditions for that are. But the goal is ultimately to get 500,000 chargers out there and they can go farther if private sector dollars or utility dollars or others foundation dollars are leveraged. Well, I'll say that I, I, um, I was I have been in, in contact with them, yes, and they have raised this issue. And I know this is a subject of negotiation with the bill being back in the in the Senate. So we'll see what is worked out between um, the White House and uh, and the Senate. So no further guidance on that. Yeah, so the idea, the whole idea here, right, is to make sure that we move electric vehicles toward parity with gas vehicles or cheaper. Eventually that'll happen on its own, but we're not there yet because they're not being produced at scale. That's precisely why we have a proposal in this legislation to buy down that cost. Think about the electric trucks at the factory that the president visited earlier this year. Uh, entry level model for that starts around $40,000. Now, uh, that's an excellent truck. 
uh, and that's a good value. But uh, you know, forty thousand is going to be out of range for a lot of families uh, that would be able to afford it if it were bought down to being in the high twenties, which is what uh, that tax credit could make possible. Uh, so you know, we're close enough that a tax credit could make all of the difference. And then, of course, if it is the same apples to apples, then you're also better off because you're saving. Typically, you're saving on on the fuel costs and maintenance costs. In fact, if you'll indulge me, let me just let me grab one thing out of the car. One of the reasons I'm excited about this is, is not just from a climate perspective, but as a taxpayer, because when you get a government vehicle, it comes with two things, the key and the gas card. And one thing I really am excited about is that Uncle Sam uh, may never have to use the gas card uh, again on these vehicles. And while, of course, electricity isn't free either, there's a very real cost savings to be had. In fact, um, from a, just from an operations point of view, it's on average $600 a year that you save in gas and $6,000 uh, overall that you save in maintenance because there are so many fewer moving parts to an electric vehicle. Um, I, I, one other uh, point I would make in bringing down the cost is the largest part of the cost of an electric vehicle is the battery. Um, the Department of Energy continues to work on bringing down the cost of battery storage. It's already dropped by about 80 percent over the past umpteen years. We want to continue to drive costs down so that these vehicles become more, effect, uh, more affordable. Well, you know, this is something I can tell you is being assessed constantly, literally every day. Uh, what we're trying to do is make sure that it's based on the, the right kind of risk analysis and uh, that we're uh, updating that strategy constantly based on the facts on the ground. Uh, you know, we're very confident in the mitigations that we have that have made air travel safe domestically and that allow us to responsibly allow international travelers. Uh, but in both directions, we're going to constantly be refreshing it based on what we learn. Thanks, everybody. Great. Right. Thank you.